Hello there, Brick Fanatics. So the finalists for Series 4 of the BrickLink Designer Program have been revealed, and uh, the response has been a bit mixed from the wider LEGO community. Because on the one hand, these sets are all brilliant, and hey, there's more of what we love here. But on the other hand, it's more of what we've already got, and indeed, more of what we've already been offered for the BrickLink Designer Program itself. Almost identical sets uh, with slight different rearrangement, which are fantastic if you're a really big fan of, say, castles, uh, but not great if you were hoping for something, anything different this time around. Fans commenting on the series for finalists were quick to point out two major things. One, every series of the BrickLink designer program thus far has featured some variation on a castle theme, which means that we've got several different castle builds that are all fairly similar. Two, a lot of the designers who have been selected in the latest series of the Bricklink Designer Program are designers who have had their designs picked in previous series of the same program. So we're seeing the same few names pop up time and time again, with very similar building techniques and very similar aesthetics, which means that the Bricklink Designer Program has, it seems, already found the niche that it's aiming for, and there's not a huge amount of diversity within in the sets that are being offered. Now, as said, for fans of LEGO Castle, this is absolutely brilliant news because you can just add more and more and more and expand your castle play area, or indeed display piece, as far and as wide as you want it to go. On the other hand, though, these are all fairly substantial, large, and let's be fair here, a bit pricey castle builds, and they're all so similar that to the casual observer, it's all just another castle. And so uh, one has to wonder at what point the market reaches its breaking point. Clearly, from the LEGO Group's perspective, we haven't got there yet, because these things seem to keep coming out, and certainly I would imagine that the uh, eagerness to choose castle builds over and over again for the BrickLink Designer Program has something to do with the fact that when these castle builds are offered, they tend to sell out very, very fast. The Series 1 offering, Mountain Fortress, sold out in only a few hours. Now, the numbers on these sets are significantly lower than on the vast majority of other LEGO sets. If something is, for example, taken from a fan design and turned into a LEGO Ideas set, then the LEGO group is just going to keep churning them out endlessly. They're going out to a very wide audience. Uh, with these sets for the BrickLink Designer program, uh, they're only making at maximum 30,000 of these things, and so if once that level is reached, they're not going to be making any more of them. And that does mean that the potential for an audience to grow tired of them is diminished because there's never going to be too many of them and the market is never going to be flooded with too many of any one given set. I would argue that the LEGO Group's decision to just keep making castle things is because there's clearly a demand for more castle things, uh, and even when we're talking about such a niche audience as the kind of people who are picking up the BrickLink Designer Program sets, uh, they've not run out of enthusiasm yet for castles. Although granted only one series of the current iteration of the Designer Program have actually gone on sale thus far, the rest are all queued up awaiting their crowdfunding window, and it might be that as we get to the actual release time for people being able to purchase the Series 4 sets, maybe some of that interest will have waned a little bit, but that's that's just speculation. We have no way of knowing that for certain. We've also got the issue where the same few names keep cropping up in the sets that are chosen. Hanwas's The Ocean House from Series 2 looks absolutely delightful, but also looks very similar to The Riverside Scholars by Hanwas. And of course it's not a surprise that one designer has a very similar aesthetic that's carried across various different designs, but it does mean that of all of the designer program sets that we've had thus far, uh, two of them look very similar. And that's great if you want to put them both on display next to each other, but if that's not quite what you were hoping for from LEGO, then you're just kind of, it's, it's, it's an opportunity that's been lost, basically. It's worth pointing out what the designer program is actually meant to do. Way back in its inception, in its earliest incarnation, we had the BrickLink AFOL designer program, as it was known at the time. These sets were originally an attempt to give a second chance to a variety of different LEGO Ideas projects that had, for various reasons, not been approved. And you can see in the AFOL designer program sets such a wide variety of different ideas and styles and different kinds of LEGO builds. So you had a 
few of them that were buildings. You had one castle, you had others that were just more esoteric, more inventive, uh, more offbeat kind of designs. Fire engines and bikes and tiny microscale landscapes and uh, wonderful little cars, the story of Lego, a little chess set. My absolute favourite was this science tower, which I agonised over whether or not I was going to buy it. And I ultimately felt like, unfortunately, because of the, the niche and the limited run aspect of these sets, I felt like I just couldn't justify that higher price point. But these sets were a wonderful collection of different things and gave so much variety and interesting, just delightfulness to the lineup of sets that were available for the really, really niche collectors of Lego sets. Over the years, and as the LEGO Group purchased BrickLink outright, uh, this entire scheme has changed and morphed, and the edges have been sanded off to the point where we have what we have now, which is a collection of mostly buildings targeted at a very specific corner of the LEGO fandom. Leaving aside the issue of castles, we've got the same kinds of ideas coming up time and time again. There are multiple different train sets, either with a locomotive or, say, a, a train shed, for example, or a bridge. Uh, we've got buildings, buildings, buildings. Most of these are buildings. A lot of them are waterfront or riverside buildings in some way. A few of them work well alongside other modulars, but not as many as you might expect. Um, perhaps the best one that would work as part of a modular cityscape would be the Brick Cross train station, which, hey, there you go, it's a train and a building, so it's crossing off two things at once. Compare that to, say, the Sheriff's Safe set that was part of an earlier incarnation of the BrickLink Designer program, which is just something completely different to anything that we're getting here. And we see how the focus of this program has narrowed tremendously at this point. Right, I think it's time for a visual aid. The Lego fandom is something like an ogre in that it has layers to it. So if you take this as the whole of the Lego fan community, from the tiniest baby playing with Duplo all the way up to the oldest fan or the, uh, the most experienced fan building their giant personal building, their enormous collection of Lego sets that they've had for, I don't know, donkey's years. Go another layer in, and this is not in any way to scale, by the way, and you've got, say, the people who pick up the Lego idea sets, the ones who say, oh, I like that, that uh, phone box, for example, or oh, I like those insects, or something like that. People who will be aware of these sets as they're coming and who will prepare themselves will go to the Lego shop and kind of get these sets early, etc, etc. Here we've got people who design their own mocks, either for something like Rebrickable or for the Lego Ideas program, people who are, are actively creating their own things and submitting them, places, people who are sharing and engaging in the community. So that circle of people is significantly smaller than just everybody in the LEGO community. Going deeper still, we've got the BrickLink designer community. So this is a smaller niche within the LEGO sphere. This is not everybody. And as we go down these smaller circles, we have a smaller and a smaller audience, a smaller and a smaller consumer base for the LEGO group, which is why the BrickLink designer program is limited to just 30,000 sets total maximum for any given design. Because once you get this deep in, there's not the same widespread appeal. The LEGO group doesn't feel like these sets are necessarily going to make as much money or sell as many units as some of the wider, broader ideas. When you get this deep down, you get people who are specialising. So you've got your castle builders, you've got your train builders, you've got your modular building collectors, you've got different little tiny niches within that wider bubble. And so as we get this far down, we can see how the LEGO group is catering to some of these types of niche collectors uh, and are really focusing on them. But there's a lot of space in this circle that doesn't get touched by these three smaller niches. There are people who would buy from the BrickLink designer program who don't necessarily just want these two or three different types of designs. And honestly, frankly, there's no real defining line between different people in different groups here anyway, because one person who quite likes a castle design will also like a train design, and somebody who's out here on the periphery who's just vaguely aware of LEGO will be a fan of castles just as much as somebody who's right there in the middle. And we see that across the kind of the wide and diverse spectrum of different LEGO sets that go out to the general public, to the kinds of people who get the chance to buy anything and who then may 
or may not be as interested in the niche stuff, but who would perhaps like the opportunity as the LEGO group kind of finds out what's going to sell and what's not going to sell to the widest possible common denominator. The thing about the BrickLink Designer Program was that it was intended as a way for LEGO fans to be able to celebrate uh, LEGO ideas but more. Because LEGO ideas is a brilliant concept but it can only ever be sold to one of the wider categories of LEGO fans because it's put out on a, such a large scale. So the LEGO group wants LEGO sets that are going to appeal to everyone. And with the Designer Program there was an opportunity to make things for the really hardcore nutty LEGO fans fans who love something very specific or who want to try something different or to take a chance on an idea or a Lego design that might not necessarily appeal to absolutely everybody. And the problem is that the Lego group has found a few of those smaller niches that sell particularly well and it seems like they're just kind of sticking with those. The other side of this, the thing that we've not even mentioned at all, is the fact that all of the designer program sets in the latest series are quite pricey. Or at least, well, we don't have specific prices for them yet, but just going on piece count alone, we're not expecting these sets to be easy and cheap for people to pick up. In the first series of the current iteration of the designer program, you had the Snack Shack, which sold for just £40. It was a fairly accessible, easy set for fans to pick up if they didn't want to have to spend several hundred pounds on a Lego set. While we don't have the specific numbers yet on what any of the other sets are going to sell for, just eyeballing it, just looking at the relative sizes of some of these sets, there are a couple of others that might be on the relatively cheap side of the spectrum, but all of the rest of them have such large piece counts that it's it's hard to imagine them selling for less than £100. This is the other problem with the endless array of different castle builds. Uh, Lego fans are kind of reaching the point where they've been taxed and their wallets are running out of the, uh, the, the available capital to be able to buy these things. Obviously for dedicated fans of the castle theme it's wonderful to have so many big chunky additions to what we've already got in the form of say Lion Knight's Castle because all of these look fairly similar to Lion Knight's Castle in different iterations uh, and you can just make this kind of huge expansive castle scene. But if you're not that into the castle theme, if maybe one castle is enough for you, then it's difficult to say which is the right castle to pick. This is basically the issue at hand, that the niche that the LEGO group has really, really latched onto here is big expensive castles for people who can't get enough of castles. And one of the a fairly justified pieces of feedback I've seen on the internet from this is if castles are that in demand why is there not a castle theme? Why are we having to do this through the niche designer program instead of the LEGO group simply giving us more castles again on a wider spectrum, on a wider scale? Because absolutely things like Lion Knight's Castle, things like the Creator 3-in-1 Castle, things like the New Medieval Village prove that there are enough fans of a castle theme to justify more castle sets sent out to a wider audience, in which case the designer program would then be free to do more esoteric and different creative, uh, less moulded, less formal, less rigid things. The same can be said of trains, the same can be said of all of these waterfront sets which are, let's be fair here, uh, heavily influenced in some cases by pirates or by the idea of having ships on water. And that being the case, if we got more pirate sets, if we got more train sets to everybody, then the BrickLink Designer Program would be free to do more weird stuff. And it's weird stuff that really makes the original version of these AFOL Designer Program sets feel so wonderful. And whatever, there are probably like numbers relating to sales figures that have made all of these decisions for the LEGO group. But at the same time, I am reminded of an anecdote I heard from a while ago where the LEGO group for a while wasn't really making any houses. They moved in a very different direction. And then after discovering that one particular LEGO house sold quite well, they tentatively started making modular buildings. They just kind of put them out to see what happened. And now that's exploded and everybody is buying LEGO houses all the time because LEGO houses, it turns out, are something that are in massive demand. But for a long time there, the LEGO group just said, nah, people don't want to buy houses. And I can't help but feel the same might be true of castles. The real problem with all of this is that because the designer 
program is so fixated on the same few different types of things, we're never going to get the next big thing in LEGO from this. We're never going to get additional innovation because it's just kind of going through the motions. I think flowers are another good example. The LEGO group just kind of tried it once to see what would happen and suddenly discovered that there was a huge interest in this particular type of LEGO set. And the Bricklink Designer program could be finding those next big things in innovation for the LEGO group, but it's not because it's just doing the same few things over and over and at a scale where most LEGO fans are priced out of the entire program. There is something to be said at a time when LEGO idea sets are, it seems, not entirely, but a large part of them are getting smaller and smaller in size and scope and scale in order to accommodate for a market that is a little bit more cash pinched than we were a few years ago. And the designer program then offers the bigger, meatier, chunkier, larger builds that the really hardcore LEGO fans want. And there is something nice in that. It's just, it would be nice if it wasn't also just the same kinds of sets over and over and if we had the opportunity for a little bit more variety. The designer program was intended as a crowdfunding solution. And the point of crowdfunding is that the consumers prove in advance whether or not something is worth selling. And instead of allowing for all of the weird and the wild stuff that you get with crowdfunding, the LEGO group has kind of just turned it into a pre-order system for limited run LEGO sets. And it's not quite what it should be. There should be an opportunity here for the testing of waters and for the exploration of things that wouldn't otherwise get a look in, where we've kind of ended up with the most boring version of a crowdfunding service here. At the same time, and with all of that said, it has to also be emphasised that all of these sets, both in the current Series 4 that have just been revealed, and all of them going back, are all absolutely delightful. The wonderful designs, they have been made with love and care by fans who just love this kind of thing, just love designing and building their own sets, and have done an absolutely wonderful job. That's the thing. None of these are bad designs. They're all absolutely glorious, and it's great that they're all getting a chance at being made. It would just be nice if, in addition to that, we also got a little bit more variety in here. But what do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Am I complaining about nothing? Are these sets all absolutely wonderful and I should just shut my beak? Probably. Uh, but let me know the specifics of how I should shut my beak in the comments. Also, make sure that if you're going to be making a lego.com purchase in the near future that you use the QR code, which is on screen now, or the affiliate link, which is down in the description. Make sure that you go to brickfanatics.com for all of your LEGO news and reviews. Make sure that you sign up to our newsletter so that you never miss anything LEGO related ever again. Thank you for watching.